In this tutorial, what we're going to do is take a look at a couple of different things. The first one I want to do is just to finish something up from the last session, which is to look at some of the extra ways we can send input signals into the micro bit. What we saw in our last lesson was how we can use the buttons on the front of the unit. I've just got a picture here of the, uh, the, the micro bit itself, and you can see we've got the push to make switch, we've got button A just here, and we've also got button B as well. But what we uh, also have access to as well is these additional pins on the front, these things called GPIO pins, uh, short for general purpose input output. You can connect switches and LEDs, and you can even drive little um, motor controllers and things off this if we wanted to, uh, as you get a bit more confident with your electronics further up in school. The way that this works though is, uh, as a human being, we act naturally as something called a capacitor, we, and the, uh, the micro bit controller itself can measure that. So we could actually make it so that as long as we're holding this ground pin just here with the right hand, just pinch it between your first two fingers, we could then use the left hand and we could lightly touch any of these three different uh, little metal pads just here and the micro bit can detect that. So I've actually got one, two, three, four, five ways that we can physically interact with the micro bit. And I thought it might be nice to have a quick play with those just to see them work. So what I've done is on the week four notes, if you scroll down just a little bit from the top of the page, you'll see some code just here. Let's go and pick that up. Uh, Control C to copy. And then what I'm going to do is load up the Mu IDE. I've got one just here that I loaded earlier on, and we can paste the code into there. Keyboard shortcut, Control and V. Let's just take a look at the code we're writing before we push it onto the micro bit so we can try and understand what we're doing. So the first line is standard, we always use that, so that's making sure that we're pulling in some code which will allow us to use things like the pins and the different switches on the micro bit, so we always have that. I've then got a while true, so I'm starting a loop just here, and you can see the code that's part of that loop is all that code here that's in dented from that point forward that we've used the tab key above the caps lock key to, to tab that code in to make sure it's part of it. Let's look at what we've got in there. So my first line says uh, that if pin zero, so that's the leftmost one of those pins, it's got a zero on it, if pin one gets touched and on the display we'll show a picture of a happy face. Uh, if, that's not, if that isn't the case, if we haven't pushed pin zero, then see if we've pushed pin one. If we have, show a sad face, and finally, if we've not done that, but we've pushed pin two, then what we'll do is we'll show a, uh, an asleep face instead. And if I wanted to, I suppose I could have also said on here uh, some other things. I could have borrowed some code from uh, last week. I could have said, let's have a look, L if, I um, can't remember the code now, but thankfully I wrote it down. Uh, I think that's in week three. Let's have a look. This is a good thing about coding. You can always recycle. Here it is. It's button A is pressed. Let's, let's use that. So I'm just copying that from the week three notes, going back onto mute. Uh, if that one gets pressed, don't forget the colon, uh, and also automatically tabbed in for me, I could do something else. I could go uh, display dot show, and I could write the letter A just to indicate that we've pushed the A, uh, and I could do one for B if I wanted as well, or I could also finish by saying that if none of those things, if I haven't pushed any buttons at all, then what I'd like to do, and show something, I'm just kind of doing this on the fly. Um, okay, just do a minus sign, I think, like that, just to indicate that nothing's happening. There we go, I'll do that. So I've, uh, I've written several different possible outcomes that could happen. What I'm gonna do is flash that to my micro bit. So I'm clicking the flash button now. Making sure it works. If I have any errors, then I'll see them pop up here in the REPL down at the bottom. And what I'm doing now is I'm picking up my micro bit. You can do this with yours as well. With my right hand, I'm holding the ground pin between two fingers. And then with my left hand, I'm touching zero. And as I touch it, as long as I keep my finger on it, I get a nice smiley face. That's lovely. I'm now pushing one. And uh, it looks very grumpy, actually. Yeah. And if I push and hold my finger on one, I get a sad face. Two, I get this sort of maybe like three horizontal lines, but I'm sure that that means asleep. And also I get the letter A if I push and hold button A. If I push and hold button B, nothing happens, but that's because I didn't write any code to do that. So that was the first thing I wanted to show you, which was ways that you can do that. So we could always uh, remix any of the programs we've made in the past to take advantage of using pin zero, pin one, and pin two. 